Hi, and welcome again to another edition of Market Analysis. I'm Giovanni Benacourt, analyst, trader, and operator with Vantage Markets. Traders are digesting the Fed's latest rate hike, looking for signs that the recent turbulence in banking has abated. But Treasury uh, Secretary Janet Yellen grabbed the market's attention by saying she hasn't considered a blanket insurance of guarantees of all deposits, despite reports suggesting this was an option. Her comments somewhat spooked markets, particularly regional bank stocks. In uh, more normal circumstances, the Federal Reserve dovish hike Wednesday will have been sheared to the rafters by markets. That didn't happen as all three major indices closed sharply lower, but there's always the chance of a delayed positive reaction once the dust settles. So that could be also another way of buying the dip. Uh, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said the central bank no longer believes that ongoing rate increases will be appropriate to quell inflation. He replaced that language with this more dovish cousin, some additional policy firming may be appropriate. This subtle but significant change ought to have been welcomed by markets as signaling the near end of rate hikes, something investors have desired for months. Instead, a couple of things spoiled the party besides the Ms. Yellen saying that the Nini language highlighted the Fed's concerns over the recent banking turmoil are great enough to warrant altering its course on rate hikes. Also, there remains a disconnect. The Fed isn't forecasting any rate cuts this year, but markets are. Uh, Powell said banking systems is sound, but noted that the recent developments would likely tighten credit conditions. Mr. Powell added the Fed will use all tools to ensure that bank deposit remain safe and sound. Now, we're going to be focusing today on the U- on new U.S. home sales data and coming out. Economists on, on our bridge forecast that February new home sales will come in at 650000 compared to the previous value of 670000 Today, we also received U.S. initial jobless claims data. Uh, economists were estimated right around 198,000 claims, but instead we received 191,000 lower than what was expected. And I don't think the Fed will like that number because the Fed wants to see unemployment rising. And the, the, if the, up, and the jobless claims actually is lower, then that means more people are getting jobs. So their job is just getting a bit more harder. So with that being said, Let's take a look at the fluctuations for today. So yesterday, we saw how markets did rally. They validated my support, my resistance of 13,000. But quickly, 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 it, uh, it retraced because of, you know, of what Ms. Janet Yellen said. It spooked the market, so markets closed lower uh, in a sense. Today, we have opened in a, in a gap down. So would that be something to first consider? Would markets come and close that gap and, and continue with the rally to take out that high that was made yesterday? That could be one possibility. Another possibility would, could be markets come, close that gap, and then continue the sell-off uh, coming out to take out you know, yesterday's low. That could be another possibility. Or market could also just enter into a consolidation stage uh, lateral movement ranging and stayed within the body of yesterday's range. That is all your three uh, possibilities for today. Wow, really, which of the three could happen? Who knows? Nobody has a, a crystal ball. But you, those are your three, uh, you know, your three scenarios here. As, as the same token goes with the S&P, the S&P, however, the, those shows a stronger gap down. So here we go. The 4,000 marker is a key level for traders. Market has opened with a gap down on that. So would markets actually come and close that gap? And if that happens, then will then this now resistance turn into, into support? That could be the most likely scenario when if, you know, if this does have settled. The uh, number of the U.S. jobless claims doesn't help the Fed, but does help others. Thinking, okay, the market is, you know, market conditions are, labor conditions are strong. So, will that 
actually help you know, rally the market to the upside. Uh, if we were to uh, open right now, right now in the in the sense of the futures market, then we could be saying that we could be opening obviously to the lower, right? So let's say if uh, if we actually continue with this movement, where we come down towards the low, we have the uh, moving average a nine day EMA. Would that be enough uh, to give us support, or would the market just continue to move lower? That's yet to be seen. Then we have the Dow also with a strong gap down, but the market hasn't really continued to move in much lower than that. So that could also be an indication, the same as, as the S&P, uh, for it to just have, try to make a move to the upside. As far as crude oil goes, uh, crude, go crude oil actually is has opened up with a very you know, nice gap to the upside, trading right around the, the, the uh, moving average. So would it continue with that movement to the upside or would it come down to close that gap and then find some, 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 uh, some buyers around this area to uh, bring it bring it back up? It could be profit taken. If it does, just to, just to close it, the RSI is uh, in, on the lower, lower end of the, uh, of the range. So, but it's not in oversold territory anyhow. So let's see what happens. But I am, I am, I'm gonna be long uh, crude oil. And as far as net goes, net has actually opened where it closed yesterday, and it is pushing lower. I'm thinking that it will revisit the 20th, February 22nd low. So I am selling net gas. As far as gold goes, uh, gold was actually pushing lower. Uh, I was looking. At the, uh, at the at the close of yesterday of 1969, it it fluctuated below that. It closed that gap already, so that was the place I am long gold now, and my my exit will be right below my resistance. I'm I'm looking at a goal to continue move, moving higher. So let's see what, if that's that's the trades. And then we have silver, which also opened with a small gap down. It kind of closed it already, uh, but it's retraced uh, a bit more. So silver is a bit more shaky for me. So I'm going to wait for uh, confirmation that it is actually going to continue to move higher. Then we have copper. Copper also opened with a, with a gap up and it's pushing higher. I am already in in copper, long copper, uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is looking to come back up to 28,000, that psychological resistance level. And let's see if that will if that will be the case. As far as the euro goes, euro did open with a strong gap up. Uh, will, it come, will they come down to close it? It kind of almost did, but not really. But it is pushing lower. So I am waiting for, for the market to come somewhat lower and see if around the what my resistance range closed, Right around 108.5, around that area, I'll come in be long. Uh, the pound has already closed that gap, and perhaps now is the, is the good moment to you know come in and be long on the on the pound. As far as the the dollar index goes, it opened with a gap down. It's kind of closing it. Now will it have continue have to receive more pressure? Uh, 101.5 would be the uh, the support for today and I'm, I'm waiting for that to happen if that happens uh, obviously then we have a nice rally or nice movement fluctuation in gold or in the metals and crude oil okay in the indices that's it for me today have a fantastic trading day i'll see you tomorrow